oh, I'm here. I'm still alive. I don't go to the hospital. I don't Uh, go to the hospital. (laughs) The only place I went was the hospital. That was the only road trip I ever did was, was to the hospital. And now I've done heaps of road trips. Welcome to the Well With Cannabis podcast, a show dedicated to telling the life-changing stories of those who live well with cannabis, all while teaching you how to do the same. Meet your host, Emily Kyle, a registered dietitian nutritionist turned certified holistic cannabis practitioner. Emily changed her life for the better with the help of the cannabis plant, and now she is committed to helping others do the same. Tune in each week to hear heartwarming stories and gain the knowledge you need to feel connected, inspired, and supported on your own cannabis journey. Whether you're a new cannabis consumer or a lifetime lover, you'll benefit from these uplifting tales of real-life journeys that will show you how you, too, can live your best life well with cannabis. Hi there. Before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to share a note on potentially sensitive content. The episodes on the Well With Cannabis podcast are created for adult audiences only. We will at time cover sensitive topics, including but not limited to suicide, abuse, mental illness, sex, drugs, alcohol, psychedelics, and the obvious use of plant medicine. Explicit language may be used occasionally. Please refrain from watching or listening to the show if you're likely to be offended or adversely impacted by any of these topics. The information on this show is for informational and educational purposes only. It does not constitute medical advice. If any of the content on this podcast has brought up anything for you, please reach out or speak to a professional or someone you trust. Let me introduce you, Miss Louisa from Harmony Gardens and Grub, which we'll get into later. And I am so excited you are here all the way from New Zealand, which is awesome. And you, I have been so like in love with this word. You are a green fairy. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. So (laughs) let's start a little bit. You say you've been a recreational medical consumer for 20 years, but recently you've had something bigger happen. So I'd love to get into your story and see where cannabis plays a part in that. Sure. Well, um, so yeah, the long story is I, I have been using it very clandestinely as we all had to for really for probably anxiety management. Now I look back, um, it, it just made the world more of a place that I could cope. Um, and, but the stigma and the shame of having to hide it and the anxiety of having to hide it even now there's still a lot of stigma you know as you will know too so that kind of had almost a counter therapeutic effect that's um, a good way to put it actually <laughs> yeah yeah hey it's a medicine and it's you mm-hmm. know but we've yeah. got to be careful about it so then about five oh about seven years ago I got deathly deathly ill very very suddenly out of the blue um from a very moldy house actually I moved into a really old house and it was full of black mold it had been used to cook methamphetamine by the previous tenant so yeah it was pretty bad oh my gosh very rainy and that activated all the mold spores and within six months I'd lost a third of my body weight um I was just vomiting diarrhea everything I had a massive blockage in my bowel and speaking with a naturopath we decided it was um like a toxic shock overload I was probably Mm -hmm. not super super fit I was I was pretty fit and healthy but not super fit and healthy I was coming right from some um health issues and just working my way back to work and I was doing really well and then I found this house and just took me out completely um to the point where I was in hospital um they didn't think I was going to survive my first surgery all they could do was put a colostomy bag on me and send me oh my god that was all I could cope with yeah I was skin and bone you poor thing oh my gosh dreadful so um and they had to keep me in hospital for a week to fatten me up before they could even do anything I I was literally in hospital to fatten up then they did this surgery sent me home with a colostomy bag um Eight months later, I went back and had a section of my bowel removed and they wanted to also remove the colostomy bag at the same time and join me up. And I said, no way. That's a huge load. A lot. Number yeah. one. Yeah. And also hospitals, well, you know what they're like. And they didn't really have anything 
in the way of natural healing. It's all very much pills. Um, the food is very artificial, full of sugar, full of this, that and the other, to the point where I had to bring my own food in. Yeah. Um, talking to the dietitians, they just don't get that giving you sugar and red food coloring water yes it will put weight on but that's not a good thing that's not no. healthy you, you know that's not a good no. healthy way to increase weight right so, and it doesn't facilitate healing by any means no, no just facilitates ulcers inside your insides and diabetes yeah. and cancerous tissue and but they couldn't understand that that's where I was having a real difficulty and I'm a nurse yeah. by training yeah. Um, oh, that's so interesting. I have so many <laughs> nurses that I mean, later in life become so interested in cannabis. So I think a lot of people will relate to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I really related to it as a nurse, because I was in um, special needs and mental health. And I could see the damage that these horrific, horrific drugs were doing to people. We had people on lithium, carbamazepine you know the liver damage and they're just literally shuffling zombie corpses of human beings and um I had a few run-ins with psychiatrists I had run-ins with psychiatrists when I tried to get them to decrease the amounts of drugs people were on mm -hmm. and they would say one psychiatrist actually said to me well if you think you know more than me you can go and find yourself another psychiatrist and he really really tore me a new one yeah Absolutely. Just because I was advocating for my patient who was on four times the adult dose of Valium, quadruple the adult dose of Valium every single day. And she had been for at least 40 years and hadn't been reviewed. Poor thing. And it's the medical system here in the United States is exactly the same. I feel like everybody can relate to what you're saying. And that, that's actually sad that everybody can relate to that because it's just, it happens everywhere. Well, exactly. And why are we allowing it? To me, that's yeah. chemical abuse. When yeah. I started seeing referrals for six months old babies who were already being prescribed Prozac, 15 years ago, I saw that that was happening 15 years ago in this country. Wow. When I saw that, I thought I can't be a part of this system. A six month old baby and you're giving it Prozac. What the, it's you know, crazy. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So if I and could just share a personal story with you, I also was a healthcare provider and I was actually a registered dietitian and wow. I worked in a hospital on a GI unit, everybody coming in for bowel resections yeah. and colonoscopies, col col colostomies. And yeah. that was half the reason I quit was because I was wow. like, this is so against everything that I believe in. And I literally remember bringing in the tray with the juice, with the red dye to people. Yeah. And it was so painful to me, like, and so against every fiber of my being that that was a huge reason that I left that that workspace because it felt so wrong and so bought and paid for because nobody yes. cared if you had a suggestion to do something different nothing is ever going to it will never change yeah. unless you know people just step outside of that realm and I will say I don't ever want to discredit western medicine because it does save mm. lives there are many instances I think it's a really blurry line at this point because if my son broke his mm. arm I'd be headed to the hospital for sure but yeah you know where we're at now it's just there's there's not even a healthy balance at this point it's just mm. drugs 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 and god forbid you yeah. want to try natural healthy foods or plant mm. medicine and it, that's frowned upon and yeah very I don't much. know if you found as a healthcare provider, that was really hard for me. Did you experience that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult to the point where um, when I came out of hospital after my final surgery, 2020, August, September, 2020, um, I went in for a resection of my colostomy bag. They were taking it away supposed to be an easy four day surgery um they neglected to do some basic checks my learning was I shouldn't have trusted them I shouldn't have gone in I should have said no but they refused to do some basic checks and I let them do it anyway and they should have done the checks because I wasn't fit for surgery 
So they took away my colostomy bag, but I was ulcerated all through my bowel. So they effectively put raw sewage through an ulcerated bowel. So I started getting sick and they denied me. They would not accept that I was getting sick for three days. And they left me for three days. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. All I could do was sob and have ex excrement pouring out of me for three days. Oh I couldn't God. take any pain relief. Yeah, they took my morphine pump away and insisted on giving me oral morphine, which I couldn't take. Right. So, like, how so what happens after the three days? You suffer, you poor thing. What happens? I left. Oh, it was a weekend. The surgeon came round and looked at me, patted me on the knee and said, that's normal. And left because it was Friday afternoon. He had to go to the golf course. So um, he said, I'll come back and see you on Monday. And I looked at him and I thought, I'm going to be dead by Monday. If right. this is normal, buddy, you can keep it. <laughs> it's not normal in my world. So I went home and contacted my naturopath and contacted my healthcare my natural people mm -hmm. but of course by that stage it was too late and I'd already started getting septic so I was shipped mm -hmm. back into hospital the following Wednesday in an ambulance in a state yep. of really I was a mess like, yeah it took me three and a half weeks in a hospital ward I was on two IVs in each arm I had um they put me on hydrocortisone steroids which was so heavy duty I put on a stone in a week a stone in weight in a week I was lying in a hospital bed couldn't eat couldn't drink couldn't go to the toilet nothing catheters every single oh. orifice just about had a tube yeah My just because gosh. they couldn't be bothered to they take decent didn't listen care. to you I am yeah. so sorry yeah. that is so horrific on so many levels mm. and I don't know about you, but maybe I almost feel even more betrayed as a healthcare provider that they could treat you that way. Yeah. Yeah. When I spoke to the surgeon, I tried to explain to him, look, I told you I was sick. I could barely get the words out. And he stood over me, this big, big man stood over me in my hospital bed and looked at me and he said, I don't have to listen to this. And he walked out. <laughs> that is, I, I, what? So it's at that so point sad. I went, um, yeah and at that point I went I've got to do this by myself yeah I have got to take control I have got to do this by myself and I was in hospital I had people bringing me um all my natural stuff I was I yep. don't know anything like as much as I know now all I knew how to do with cannabis was smoke it and I knew that you could cook with it but I didn't really mm -hmm. know much about it and I knew that you could make a balm with it so that's what I was doing um, and I had turmeric and I had spirulina yeah. to detox and I was doing all this in hospital, not telling a soul I was putting. Were they in letting you bring in like food items and stuff? Were they accepting of it or did you just try and hide it? Um, they had to because I flatly refused to eat anything that the hospital would provide. And I made such a bloody noise about it. I really did. It was my third yeah. experience with this system and I was done. Yeah. I was absolutely done. Um, and I had started telling them that I was using it medicinally. I didn't have a prescription at that time, but I had started telling them. So um, it was very on the sly. But at the same time, I was also having the same reaction to the natural therapies I was using, the turmeric, the raw honey, spirulina, all that sort you know. And I actually got to the point where I made the hospital record it on my prescription sheet because they wouldn't oh, allow no. it. You know, I had to, yeah. as a nurse, yeah. actually advocate for my rights and say, look, I'm having this stuff. And if you don't let me, then there's going to be, you know, and I want you to put it on my. And then they had to go and check everything and, you know, make sure that it was a big, big dance. Yeah, it was really painful. So you start bringing in your own natural therapies. How long, mm. how much longer are you in the hospital for? How do you start getting better? So I was in the hospital for three and a half weeks. Um, they couldn't give me any more drugs because I wouldn't have any more. There was nothing else they could do for me drug wise. So they discharged yep. me. I still had, that was when they discharged me, that was just then the start of my surgical recovery. So I had like 
another two months of recovery to do oh, so um yes yeah, so I just dug in and went okay I know in the world there are dispensaries where you can go and talk to bud tenders. You can get advice on which strain is right for you. You can get foods. You can blah, blah, blah. I'm on a very restricted diet, so I'm gluten-free, refined sugar-free. I can't do a lot of um, fruit, anything with skins and seeds and that kind of thing. No dairy, no artificial anything. So it's really pure diet. Yeah. And I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to learn everything. I've got to learn to make it myself, cook it myself, use it, everything. Yeah. So I started digging and I started getting braver about it, looking online. Is anyone going to come to my door? No, it's okay. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and I, I actually found your page and I started following your page and I learned how to make. Um, I started with coconut oil for cooking. So I basically yep. started infusing that. And I was living in a motor home at the time. So I learned doing it on a crock pot <laughs> and then doing it on a double boiler in my little motor home. <laughs> Did you send me a message telling me that you needed a way? Someone had recently reached out and said that they were in an RV and looking for alternative ways to infuse. And I was like, I really need to start thinking outside the box. Was it you or yeah. somebody else? It wasn't me. No, I've, I've moved on from the motorhome now. A lot of yeah. RVers out there then I should consider. Yeah, makes a lot of sense because if you're on the road, chances yeah. are you haven't got a lot of local connections. So, True. you know, I yes. actually started exploring having little cupboards with lights in there so people could even have a little bonsai mm-hmm. to be on the road with for medicinal purposes. That's yeah. yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. So you start making coconut oil. That was your first. And where does it go from there? Oh, it just spiraled out of all all predictions. So I had very good relations with my naturopath and also the lady who ran my local natural health store. She owned it as well, which was fantastic. Really nice. So, yeah, they started trying my product. They, I was talking to them. They've yeah. been with me through my whole journey. And mm. so it was just, we just started talking about it. They became interested in trying it. So I started making um, bliss balls, little um, bliss balls with yeah. just almond meal and honey and raw cacao and bits and pieces, just really gentle Tabitha. ones for people with yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they loved them. So I made them some Christmas gift packs because it was close Aww, to Christmas. That's so nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had a cook in there and really, really got quite creative in the kitchen. I made some little um peanut butter cups with a cacao and honey topping. Thank you. And, wow. Mm, like, really exciting. So that was really cool. And then in the January, the lady in the health store said to me, look, I had somebody making this oil for me, but they've had to stop. Could you learn how to make it? And I'll sell it just quietly under the counter yeah. through my shop. Yeah. So that was the journey into starting to make the liquid oil, the infusions yeah. in the bottles. <clears throat> um, and then that started selling and then it sold mm-hmm. some more. And then she wanted my card in the shop so she could pass people on to me. And then people started asking me privately to make stuff for them. And it just spiraled. Um, I recently relocated. So I moved down to a different part of the country in May last year because I thought, well, I, the whole business, Harmony Gardens and Grub is about garden to table produce and education. What's Love more garden it. to table than cannabis? <laughs> I'm 100% with you on that. Yeah. And I wanted to bring it to a wider market. And I also wanted to step out from the shadows myself more, be known as a user and a practitioner and a respectable person, you know, not just be dismissed as a stoner. Um, Because I'm not, I'm a, you know, not that stoners, there's anything wrong with stoners, but there's so much more to it than that. Um, so yes, yeah, so I stepped out of the shadows, came down here and really started promoting it and it's just taken off. It's just taken off. It's becoming a full-time, I'm in the process of transitioning to full-time work into it now. So I'm so proud of you. Look at you go. <laughs> that is amazing. phenomenal. So how mm. health-wise today, how are you doing? 
I'm doing better. I am doing better. I'm stepped out of the hospital system completely. God bless them, but I don't want drugs and they can't offer me anything else. Um, I'm still in touch with my specialist. So he brings me up every whenever and says, how are you doing? And I say, yeah, I'm good. I've told him about medical cannabis. So I'm hoping that he will start getting interested and asking questions and starting to think as a clinician, maybe this is something we should be looking at to help. You know, that's my hope anyway, because yeah, yeah. that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, I need to be very careful of flare ups and I have to watch yeah. my own activity and I really have yep. to educate myself on you know a healthy <laughs> healthy work life balance and stress and all that kind of stuff but the cannabis really helps um mm. I now make five different strengths of oils and gummies and a skin balm with lavender and kawa kawa and um I've learned to use them in different strengths so that I can stop cramping, stop diarrhea, stop, you know, and I don't have to go to hospital and be IV anything, you know, right. I'm not taking up any hospital beds. I'm not taking up any hospital staff time. I'm managing it myself along with a whole range of other therapies. Like I say to people, it's not just cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. I do, yes. you know, slippery elm and herbal medicine and turmeric and, you know, all of the other bits and pieces that you have to do. I'm so glad you said that because Mm. I'm always telling people, I'm like, cannabis is a tool in your wellness tool belt. It's not the only thing and it can certainly help, but there's so many other things that can really play into the Mm. picture as well. So I'm really glad you said that. Yeah. Yeah. And sleep. I'm often saying to people, cannabis does, you know, don't come to me and say, I haven't slept in, you know, and I'm not, and I have a really busy job and lots of stress and I want cannabis to help me keep on going. <laughs> it's like, no, cannabis right. won't help you keep on living an unhealthy life. <laughs> right. It won't replace so true. Sleep. So true. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. It really, it needs to complement your life. It needs to fit in nicely, like a puzzle piece. It can't just really yes. be like a blanket over everything. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what pills do, isn't it? That's what antidepressants do. They just mask all the symptoms and numb your brain so that you can't react to your situation, but you need to react to it so that you can change it. Yeah. And cannabis helps get that reaction to a, a, a level that you can actually work with so it doesn't debilitate yeah. you. That yeah, is so well said. Absolutely. Mm. Now, I mm. am feeling like this poll from you as, I mean, you, as as a healthcare professional and what you've been through, you are an advocate. And do you have any advice for people on being their own advocates? Because I've had a similar experience in the hospital where I wasn't treated the way I thought I should be treated. Do you have any advice for people who might be in a similar situation feeling like I'm not really getting the care I deserve or need, or my doctor's not listening to me? How do they move forward or how do they advocate for themselves? Sure. Um, first and foremost, always take somebody with you. Always, yep. always, always have a support person, have a witness. Um, you probably need them for both of those roles. Be prepared to get salty. Be prepared to sit there and say, my naturopath actually said this to me. She said, don't leave. Just sit there in their office until you get a result that you can work with. Don't let them, Interesting. Don't let them bob you up. Yeah. yeah. And so I would say do that. I would say always take somebody with you and make sure that they're somebody who's familiar with with health care. Like doesn't have to be a nurse or a doctor, but if they've got that behind them, chances are the doctors don't you know, they don't actually want to dance with you too much. They want to boss you around. But if you push them back and not all of them, some of them are wonderful, but that system as a whole has that very much as as its ethos that we're in charge we do what we do you do what you're told and that's it and if you don't like it then it's your problem and you're at fault and you're something wrong with you that's not okay Uh, you know that's not even ethical and I know about ethics so that's not even ethical so always take someone with you be prepared to get salty and if you're not getting the result you want change they are there to serve us they are not this godlike figure who is in control of our health and well-being they're actually there like a car mechanic is there to to serve your yes, car a hundred percent the same yeah so if you don't like it change um and the last thing i would say is 
like I spent time writing complaints to hospitals and everything and that has a place but it takes a huge amount of energy and what I learned was actually it's a waste of my time they're not going to change it's Mm -hmm. not going to change the best thing I can do for me is focus all my energy on the people who are going to help me heal and get well so if you're not getting what you want from the hospital system look elsewhere go to naturopaths go to alternative healers go to all the things in the natural world that are polluted that are attacking us so ozone therapy oxygen therapy all of that you don't be afraid yeah. to make your healing journey your full-time life because it chances are it won't be forever that's beautiful I really love the way you said that Thank you. so <laughs> let me let's speed it up today your business is amazing give me a little background information on the term green fairy because I love it Okay, so green fairies are known as we're just an informal group of people. We've usually got a health related background of some description. Um, So health professionals or we've done some training in something. We've also done some training and education in cannabis. And we've also generally used it ourselves for our own healing journey. And now we make and sell it to other people for their healing journey. It's outside of the government legal system. Here in New Zealand, the government legal system is failing people and it's now been acknowledged in the in the press as failing. So that's quite oh, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. From my understanding, New Zealand is not cannabis friendly in any form. Um, the medicinal cannabis market is getting more press now. It was okay. made legal for medicinal cannabis only quite a number of years ago but it was very quiet lots of people didn't know about it so doctors don't have any education on it so a lot of doctors are very either anti it or very ignorant of it uh, or both Um, so it's very hard for people to get they have to go straight to the clinic Um, if their GP doesn't support it then they can't get funding for it they just can't get any funding Yep. Wow. It's based on their GP. That's crazy. Their own GP. So the clinics have GPs and consultants and they write you a prescription. But Mm -hmm. if your GP doesn't agree with it, you can't get government funding if you're on a benefit. That's crazy. See, that's a little different here. Like you don't need your own doctor to participate. Like if they don't Right. Like it, you actually don't even have to tell them, but okay. that's, I mean, I bet that's a big just mm. dis- discourager for people. Yeah, it is. It makes it really hard because a lot of people still only have their GP as their gateway to access healthcare. Right. So yeah. they don't know that they can do it themselves. The trouble with the clinics is if you go straight to a cannabis clinic and they get you a prescription, they will then tell your GP. Wow. And they won't tell you. that that they've done that they won't tell you that they're going to tell your GP and they won't ask your permission to tell your GP it's so crazy that we can just give so much power to these practitioners and if they have a personal bias against it that's it that's the end of the road that's the end of the road yeah say someone's listening and they're from New Zealand and they're like okay my doctor's not for it how do they go about working with a green fairy or finding you or where, what, what is their next step look like? So green fairies do advertise on Facebook. Um, there's a few quite well-known green fairies in New Zealand. I'm just um, a newly emerging one, but there's quite a few very, very, very well-established, very knowledgeable um, green fairies with products way surpassing my ones. So they've been around for a long, long time. Um, I would suggest looking it up on Facebook and there's a there is a green fairies page where you can put up your name and just say I'm seeking assistance I've got these medical conditions can somebody please help me and then a green fairy gets in touch with you by private messenger that's wonderful Um, yeah so it's quite cute the other way to do it is that you can just google CBD in New Zealand on Facebook go onto the search bar 
put yeah. in CBD in New Zealand and probably all of the people advertising CBD will come up. So Harmony Gardens will probably come up. Um, Rose Renton in the South Island will come up. She's been around for a long time and she's doing very wonderful work. She's very, very knowledgeable. Um, there's a, oh, what's her name? Crystal something who constantly advertises so there's lots of pages that actually advertise cbd oil wonderful okay. um yeah they advertise it as an information and education service and then if people want to take it further it's all done by private messenger yeah perfect so there are options out there there are options out there also perfect. green fairies are starting to appear at local farmers markets too i'm appearing at a local farmers market just I just started that. last week Mm, like that's where so, cannabis belongs with the fruits and the vegetables like that's I yeah. love that I feel like it's a perfect blend yeah absolutely I think so too and it's just so nice because people can actually have a face-to-face -face, you know we're starting to emerge yes. out of the shadows and not yes. have to be too scared about it and people can actually pick up their products I offer phone consultations but I've still had to be quite you know careful and, and discreet but it's Definitely. nice that people can just normalize it and it's just a normal part of life like it should be it's a vegetable yes. like all the other vegetables you know it's and I think that's why we've gotten so sick as a society we used to use it all the time then we eradicated it from life and look at us now. We're a mess. I know. <laughs> and then all of our other fruits and vegetables, you know, it's just, mm. I really, I personally love like gardening, homesteading anyway. So I feel like it all just like, it goes full circle. And I feel like once you get the taste of it, like not everybody gets it right away, but once you get the taste of it, it's just so like addicting and amazing. And you're like, wow, this is how like things really work. And I feel like that's a yep. really special realization and cannabis mm. can really, I feel like bring you back to that and bring you back to your roots and help you kind of return to that natural way as well. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And all the seasonality of it and the, oh, the bees. Yeah. And, yes. yeah. There's bees, so much. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be respectful of your time. I have loved listening to your story. I think it is so inspirational. And I feel like so many people are going to listen to this and be like, oh my gosh, like she is amazing. She went through this, but now like you've come out on the other side and you are helping other people through their journeys, which I feel like a lot of us in cannabis do. Like once we get over that, mm. we're like we have to come back and help people. And you doing that is just so amazing. And I'm so proud of you. And before we wrap up, I want to ask all my guests the same four questions. So I'm going to get a couple questions for you. First up, if you, if you never had cannabis in your life, what do you think life would look like today? Oh, I described it to somebody as the difference between living a gray monochrome life where you're just constantly gritting your teeth and living life in full color. That is perfect. That's yeah. such a wonderful way to say that. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you could go back 10, 20, 30 years ago and give yourself one piece of cannabis advice, what would it be? Oh, embrace it. Really, really embrace it. When I was a teenager, I was very anti all drugs. And I just assumed that cannabis was a, you know, to be lumped in with yeah. all of those. Um, and I guess what's changed for me is education you know actually learning about it experiencing it then thinking well there's all this stigma but it's here it's here for yeah. a reason what's it here for and that was that was really when I started thinking differently and going to learn to appreciate it for what it actually does um and then when I looked into well why is why is it illegal and discovered the reasons behind it and I thought oh well that's just bloody ridiculous <laughs> you know that's that's just human stupidity. We can't let yeah. human stupidity stand in the way of a, a beautiful healing plant. So, yeah, I think embrace it. Learn, get educated, and embrace it as, as normal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Standing here today, what are you most proud of? Oh, I'm here. I'm still alive. I, I don't go to the hospital. I don't uh, go to the hospital. <laughs> incredible For five years the only place I went was the hospital that was the only yeah. road trip I ever did was was to the hospital and now I've done heaps of road trips I've done road trips for my business 
um I'm planning a CBD uh, dinner event in about three weeks Amazing. on the shores oh, of Lake Tahoe. Oh, I know. We're doing it as a barbecue, Kiwi style barbecue. We're calling it a herbicue. So it's kind <laughs> You have to take pictures. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. That sounds so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and that again that's, that's awesome. about incorporating it into daily life not just using it to get stoned and high and off your face but just respecting it using it just as an everyday plant and vegetable and seasoning and enhancer and health and well-being benefiter so yeah so I get to do roach I get to go to the market and I get to go to Taupo and I get to come and see my daughter and you know I drive past places and I go oh yeah I'm past that now I don't go to hospital. I'm so happy for you. That is such mm. an amazing thing to be able to say. And like, <laughs> you have had such a journey that just to be sitting here so well and mm. so much better off on the other side, I feel like it's just such a great story. I hope mm. people can really relate to this because you have just kicked life's ass and said, I'm coming back and here I am. So congratulations mm. to you. Thank you. One Thank last you question. If you could be remembered for just one thing in the cannabis space, what would it be? Oh, um, I think being kind and sharing, because I believe like you do, that it's it goes around. It has to go around and we have to all help each other out with it. With it. Um, and one day when I'm a really old lady, I would like to be known for growing the most kick ass weed. Gosh, I just love you. I am so glad we did this interview <laughs> together. People are going to absolutely love the vibe and the energy that you bring. And people, I just, I'm really, really glad we did this interview. Thank you so much for spending time with me. If people want to learn more about you and the Green Fairies and your amazing business, Harmony Gardens and Grub, where can they go and find you? Um, we're on Facebook. Harmony Gardens is on Facebook. So have a look on there and then you can send me a message from there and I'll get back to you. That is amazing. I have no doubt people are just going to be so blessed by interacting with you and coming across all of your work. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I enjoyed every second of it. I'm so glad to connect with you. <laughs> Please send me pictures of that herbicue, okay? I definitely, definitely will. Thank you. And oh, thank you thank so you. much for all your work. And your journey was so inspiring. And you must have been so brave. So I just wanted to say thank you because it reached all the way around the world to New Zealand. That was and how, that's amazing. And that just goes back to what you say is sharing and what goes mm. around comes around. And, you know, a rising tide mm. lifts all ships. And I feel like as healthcare providers, both of us out here, singing it loud and proud. I, I really hope that someday will make a really big difference for somebody. Yep, absolutely. Me too. Absolutely. Congratulations. You've finished another episode of the Well With Cannabis podcast and are one step closer to discovering how you too can live well with cannabis. Thank you for listening in today. We hope this episode has been a helpful and informative one. Please visit emilykylenutrition.com for more information on today's show, show notes, guest information, recipes, and other resources. If you want more support and encouragement on your cannabis journey, please consider joining the private Well With Cannabis community. In this group, you can connect with like-minded individuals focused on improving their health and wellness through cannabis. Join the group today to continue your journey of wellness together at emilykylenutrition.com.